Today is Pi Day, and Pi, no matter how you slice it, is all about circles. So what better way to celebrate, I thought, than to offer you some circle music for this most circular of days. Let's start by simply tracing a circle. You probably know that the defining property of a circle is that it consists of all points that are the same distance from one central point. If we map this distance to pitch, then we simply hear the same pitch repeated over and over. Beautiful, but perhaps a little repetitive, so let's try adding a second circle. Our new path will trace around the perimeter of this new circle, while its center traces the circumference of the original larger circle. Depending on the relative amplitudes, frequencies, and phases of the two circles, we can get a variety of different shapes. This might remind you of the course that we chart on the surface of the Earth as we move around the Sun. And it is, as long as you make a few false assumptions about the nature of the solar system. Anyway, I like what we have here, but I don't love all of the repeated notes we get during the stretches where the path moves mostly tangentially. One rule I often like to add in situations like this is that whenever we would repeat a pitch, we instead play the pitch a step higher or lower. If we add this rule, instead of this, we get this. A little smoother and more melodic, don't you think? I mentioned the motion of the planets, but my true inspiration for this video is actually the famous teacups ride at Disneyland. If you've ever been on this ride, you'll remember that it involves a giant circular platform, upon which sit three smaller circular platforms, upon which sit the individual teacups that you sit in and can spin by turning the wheel in the center. I always thought this was a pretty cool design, because the path that you take through space can get pretty intricate, and you can get going pretty fast when the different rotations reinforce each other. But the fact that it's all made up of circles guarantees that it remains smooth. Of course, the teacups ride has three circles, so what kind of patterns can we get if we add another circle? Or maybe we should take a fidget spinner on the ride and go with four circles. I should mention a couple things. First, I'm rounding all of the pitches to a diatonic scale. Of course, we could use many different scales, like a blues scale, or a weird microtonal scale, but I have another idea in mind for scale choice that I'll get to at the end of the video. Second, it's worth mentioning that for most of this video, I'm randomly choosing the amplitude and frequency of each circle within certain bounds. I'm avoiding frequencies that are integer multiples of one another, since that way I get more unpredictable and melodically interesting shapes. In general, I go back and forth on how I feel about using randomness in my creative process, but one thing I definitely think it's good for is exploring a space of possibilities. Anyway, now that we've explored a little, there's something that's been bothering me. The notes come out mechanically, as a steady stream, regardless of how fast we're moving. Let's change that. Instead of having a new note every so many milliseconds, let's base it on how much arc length we cover. When we move quickly and cover a lot of ground, we'll have faster notes, and when the path slows down, we'll have fewer notes. Take a listen. Of course, the amount of arc length per note is an adjustable parameter. We can make it small, resulting in lots of notes. or large, resulting in fewer notes. At this point, I'm starting to find the music really satisfying, but there's still something missing. The distance from the center has a sonic meaning, and the speed at which we're moving has a sonic meaning, but we're completely ignoring the angle. So to incorporate the angle, let's turn to the most famous musical circle of them all, the Circle of Fifths. Suppose we're traveling along our path and it's time to play a note. First, we measure the distance to the center and map that to a musical pitch. In this example, we're pretty far away, so the pitch we got is a little bit higher than an F natural at the top of the treble staff. Next, we imagine a circle of fifths overlaid upon the space, and see that we're in the three sharp, or A major sector. We therefore round the pitch to an F sharp, since that's the nearest note in A major. Then, as we move along the path, we move through different harmonic sectors. When we vary the key based on angle like this, the music goes from harmonically static to dynamic, 
with some passages lingering in a particular harmonic area and others rapidly modulating through different keys. Here's a wild, frenetic version. And here's a slower version I found particularly beautiful. So what do you think? Does this feel like the musical equivalent of the teacups ride? And how else could we have made music from these patterns? Also, if you like this music, consider supporting me on Patreon where I'm posting a longer version of the music you're hearing right now, along with the sheet music so you can try playing it yourself. Oh, and I also teach music and coding lessons if you're interested. Check out the link in the description. You're still here? Well, why don't you check out my other Pi Day video on the problem with Pi Digit music? This was actually just supposed to be a short video to drum up interest in that video, but I got a little carried away. <laughs>